if you do catch a hot song and you and you blossom you you must remain hungry and humble so you stay hungry you got to stay on the gas pedal you got to stay all gas no brake pass you know what i mean and you got to stay humble you can't get big headed start burning bridges start you know us uh, high siding on people that you know help you get to where you at today i'm going to talk about one of my favorite rappers in the whole wide world a rapper who never switched up his style a rapper who keeps reinventing himself using the same style he started with almost 40 years ago tonight i'm gonna talk about the one and only e40 my top five favorite rapper and one of the most low-key inspirational rappers in hip-hop history in my opinion and not just when it comes to west coast music not just when it comes to the bay area but when it comes to hip-hop in general E-40 was one of the first people to do the independent thing. Sell records out of the back of his car. Real cats out there know that the Bay, you know what I mean, specialized in independent music, uh, independent, uh, doing it themselves, selling tapes out the trunk of the car. My name is carved in, in the history books. Um, but, you know, no, we'll never probably get our... Uh, our um, our, uh, our props, our, uh, our serious recognition um, until probably, probably one of us pass away. If it weren't for rappers like E4D, e Feezy, who switched up the game with his, the way he talked, the fasheezy, the sheezy and things like that. That's all E-40. That all came from E-40. Well, technically, it came from three times crazy because three times crazy laced him, taught him how to say fasheezy. Three times crazy is a group from the Bay Area, and they actually had a dope album. They had a song, um, Keep It On The Real. I think that's their song, but yeah, they were they were good. I sighed But apparently, they were the first ones to technically start the fasheezy thing but e40 being a much bigger rapper is the man who made it worldwide if it weren't for rappers like e40 rappers like jeezy wouldn't have their name if it weren't for rappers like e40 rappers like kanye west wouldn't have called himself yeezy this is how influential people like myself are too short and and the Bay is to the rest of the world. And this is no this or nothing. We contribute so much to hip hop that uh, they just, we just, we'll never get our props. Off the heezy for sheezy, too sheezy, I thought you feezy. That all come from a song. It come from the streets. No particular rapper now. Not no, not a particular rapper. Now rappers have said it. My boy Tweezy, first time I heard it was my boy twice. And then my boy, and then Bart from Three Times Crazy, he corrected me on saying it. And that from there, because I was saying for shizzy, right? So then I had the word down packed by then. Then we hear a couple of my other pilots from the town screaming it. Then one of my my, uh, my, my Frisco folks screaming it. Then it started, you know, words circulate around the soil. This is all E-40, and this is all how they were talking in the Bay Area. More specifically, a little town called Vallejo, California. A lot of my family is from Vallejo. My father is from Vallejo. My grandfather is from Vallejo. Vallejo 707. Not too far from San Francisco. In that general area. From what I understand, it's always been a town of people with aspirations. Hustlers. Vallejo has bred some serious hustlers. Including some of my family. And including one of my favorite rappers of all time, E Mother FM40. Now, the first time I came across E40, we all know E40 was born in Vallejo. We're going we're gonna to talk about my introduction to E40, and we're going to kind of go from there and tell some E40 stories. But when I first got introduced to E40, he had already been doing his thing on the underground 
with the click. I personally didn't really get introduced to E40 until his solo album, 1995. I was a junior in high school. He released an album called In a Major Way. And ladies and gentlemen, this album, <laughs> I played the heck out of this album. And just hearing him, hearing his off awkward flow, um, I, I can't even explain what I heard the first time I heard it. But I was like, okay, this guy's first of all, he's different. And not only that, he is spitting. E-40 was spitting back in the day. Back in the day, E-40 still spits. But you know what I mean. When I first heard E-40, bro was spitting bit and i was like dog i i I need more of this so that's when i kind of went backwards and then i got introduced to the click and some of their first stuff carlo carlo rossi was one of my favorites top of the line ryan carlos rossi carlos rossi top of the line ryan carlos rossi Ooh, top of the line ryan carlos rossi ryan i drinks it all the time it's extra satisfying some some day i'm not denying i mean it's bro e40 crazy crazy that carlo rossi and that made me want to try carlo rossi so i used to get carlo rossi that was the one of the first things i would drink when i was a kid and if you don't know what carlo rossi is go to your local supermarket go to the wine section and look all the way down it ain't no top shelf type of shit Carlo Rossi is that stuff that's going to get you drunk, get you faded. And as a 16, 17, 18 year old, that's what I wanted. And that's what I wanted the girls to do. So I would go buy jugs of Carlo Rossi. I think Burgundy was one I used to get. There was another one. Oh, it was a sangria. Maybe it was sangria. Big old jug for like $5.99. Big old jug of just some... of the worst wine now that i am a wine connoisseur and i'm in, i'm almost 50 years old and I, I i drink wine i like wine i i enjoy wine you know now <laughs> looking back man i can't believe i used to drink that stuff but hey it is what it was and the reason why i got introduced to carlo rossi of all things was because of e40 and i bet you a lot of people did it across the country and it amazes me how hip-hop culture helps sell things Run DMC, they mentioned Adidas at a concert, and the sales of Adidas go up 30,000%. Nelly does a song called Air Force One. Remember that in my Air Force Ones? Got me knocking in my Air Force Ones. I don't like that song. I didn't care for that era too much, even though that album was banging. That Nelly album was banging, but I think that was on the that was on the Lunatics album. But anyway. Nelly helped sell Air Force Ones, and E-40 helped sell Carlo Rossi back in 1995. It's just amazing. It, it, I wish someone could actually do a, uh, do some numbers and things on on how much money, how much, how many products hip hop has helped sell. Even today, just the fashion, the clothes. You know what I mean? The designer brands, the Tommy Hilfiger. If it wasn't for hip hop, Tommy Hilfiger would have went out of style 35, 40 years ago. But hip hop, hip hop did it. Hip hop kept him. But E40 was one of those guys that I started studying right away. Okay, he's different. Why is he different? He's standing out. I then learned that he was doing his thing independent with Sick Witted Records. And that made me more curious about who is this guy from Vallejo, California. And at that time, I didn't even really know my dad like that. So I don't, don't even don't even think I knew my dad was from Vallejo. I may have known, but it wasn't one of those like, oh, it's heartwarming and it's going to bring us close together. My dad didn't really come into my life until I was like 18, which it's OK. I love him. And until the day of his death, we had a good relationship. So I, I at least got to spend about 20 plus years with him. So I'm cool with that, you know, but. I don't even think I knew anything about Vallejo, California. So here's this awkward, this weird dude with an awkward style. He's a bit, he's a heavy set guy, you know what I mean? But he has the confidence of a, a damn lion, you know, and he's actually spitting. The independent thing really intrigued me right away. I've always been intrigued by rappers who did things independently. And I understood it back then. I understood when I was 16, 17, I understood the independent grind. I already heard stories 
like Too Short who would sell his tape out of the trunk of his car until he sold 500,000 copies and he was selling to the local dealers and the dealers would ask him to make songs with their names and anything like that like I, I i had already studied all that and i had already knew that so here's this other guy coming along named e40 so in a major way was the album that i personally started to really study this dude and, and was a big supporter of his and that is the one with the album cover that is E40 inside of a Rolex watch and E40 is cooking up something on on the stove which appears to be a white substance that was very highly in demand in the 80s and 90s what rhymes with brack actually if you're blood you would probably say brack but that's what that album cover is in a major way and that off top caught me all right let's 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 dive into this and the first song the one that they were playing on the box all the time. Y'all don't, you, you guys remember the box? Who remembers the box? Comment down below if you remember the box. Almost every city had a box. But I would go to my friend's house in Compton, and we would watch the box all day, and E-40 would always come up. So the box was a like an in-demand thing. You pay, what, 99 cents or something like that for them to play a song, and they would play the song. If you requested the song five times, they play the song five times on the box. And that's how a lot of... Rap groups like Bone Thugs and Harmony, E40, Pyru Love, the, the Banging on Wax album, that was big on the box. I remember that was huge on the box. And I just remember seeing E40. And the song that popped up was the first one was One Love. One Love would be the first song that I remember hearing from E40. Even though he had already released music, like I said, up at that point. But the one album that I remember off, I mean, the one song was was One Love. One Love, One Love. So that was the one that took me to the album. And I do believe I, I recorded the album from a friend. Like, I don't think I first bought E-40's first album. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, I've bought many albums since. Legit bought, walked to the swap meet. Fifteen ninety nine. Here you go. Let me get that E forty CD. And to this day, I still stream them. So, but with my first introduction to E forty, I do believe I I didn't buy the tape. I I dubbed it from someone. And then I was like, okay, I need more of this. But there was so so much stuff on the phone, and I'm, I'm I'm reading all these titles, and it's all this weird slang, and I'm like, what the hell is a bumble? What is he talking about when he says he has a chip in his phone? But uh, he had dusted and disgusted with Tupac. I totally forgot about that. Was the one too? Because Pac was huge at this time, right? Pac was the man. Pac was everything at this time. So to hear Tupac on an E40 album, I'm like, okay, so he has Tupac stamp. He must be onto some. So I kept going. I mean, I'm looking at songs like Sideways on that album. I'm riding sideways this way, that away. Yeah, and then this was the introduction to Be Legit, his cousin, brother, cousin, one or the other. And then D-Shot and Sugar T. My introduction, because like I said, they had already been together as the clique. And they were already driving around the country, ladies and gentlemen, going down south to Gramlin University and different colleges and selling their tapes out of the trunks of their car. You don't realize they would go home. They would, they would leave Vallejo, California with a thousand CDs. And come home with $10,000. And then they just do it every week. It was working. Put a little money in the gas. Maybe stay at a motel or something like that. Get home and re-up and do the same exact thing. Ladies and gentlemen, back in the day, you had to buy a CD. You had to buy a tape. Let's go tape. We're talking tapes back then. It wasn't just as easy as picking up your phone and streaming a song. Oh, my God. I want to hear that new J. Cole diss to Kendrick Lamar. I'm going to go ahead and download it now. No, when you were a kid, if you wanted to hear the J. Cole diss to Kendrick Lamar, you had to walk to the swap meet. You had to ask your mom to drive you to the warehouse or to Sam Goody or something like that, and you had to spend money. So now just imagine someone trusting some dude with this tape out of the trunk of his car back then money and money it wasn't easy to come by and five dollars in the 80s was a lot of money ten dollars whatever the case is whatever they were selling them for you know what i mean 
but it was that hustle that got E40 to where he is today. But yeah, man, I remember that um, song. What was it? Sprinkle Me from that album. That was huge. Sprinkle Me was another one. Sprinkle Me, man. Sprinkle me. I'd be more hipper than a hippopotamus. Get off in your head like a neurologist. Push him away than that list. Got a partner by the name of Tupac Lips. The 707 them back to floor terrace. I pulled the fully out my ball cap, then I frosted down my esophagus. The group that I'm with, the click. Shiggity shot, legit. Family orientated, game related. It's the yit. Killing these motherfuckers off, crucial. Sitting on down mutual. Running through these lyrics as of those fiber, like Metamucil. Tama, Tama. Sing it with me. Come on. Body water. Sprinkle me, Mike. Sprinkle. Man, that was my joint, dog. Here comes the top notch. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I was knocking the heck out of that song. So I I think from day one, we even named one of our homeboys 40. One of our homies. I'm friends to him with him to this day. We named him 40. But dude, whoo, man. Man, man. <coughs> Such a good time. Such a good time. Cause music was different. Take yourself back to 94, 95. It's not like 2024 where people all want to sound the same. They all want to sound like the Futures and the Young Thugs and the NBA Youngs. Like you can't tell anybody from anybody. Back in 95, ladies and gentlemen, you had variety. E-40 didn't sound like EPMD. Okay. Das FX, they didn't sound like Too Short. Dr. Dre's beats didn't sound like DJ Premier's. Like, it was just a different time, but everybody was good. And E-40 stood out. But E-40 got a lot of hate back then. He got a lot of hate back then. Who is this weird sounding guy? And I remember telling people I like E-40 and they would tell me E-40's whack. Ooh, you know what that did? E-40's whack, what? Boy, that was fighting words for me because I knew in my heart, I was like, no, this guy's not whack. This guy, this guy ain't whack. There's no way this guy's whack. This guy is not whack. And I'm not taking that for an answer. I knew E40 was something. And I still know E40 was that. I knew I was right. I was right. Fast forward 35 years, I was right. E40 is still doing his thing. Every few years, he has a damn hit single. Or he's involved with the hit single or something. Nope. Yup. Have a told on the book? Nope. Paper the trigger? Yup. I mean, come on, dog. That was my thing. Ever said it nigga out when he was down and there's nope? Like, come on, dog. Nigga don't act like a bitch, bitch, bitch. That's why the E40 answer to bitch, bitch. Ugh, don't do it. I mean, come on, dog. I don't F with you. You little stupid ass. I ain't effing with you. And then, 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 then I ain't messing with you. I mean, come on, dog. E40 is involved to this day in songs. But let's go back. I'm getting way ahead of myself, man. E40 was getting a lot of hate back then for his style. Especially from people on the East Coast. East Coast did not like E40. From what I remember, a lot of East Coast cats did not like E40. So much so that they would go on magazines okay and talk trash about e40 there was a little situation where a very popular rapper by the name of the notorious big said something not so nice about e40 it came to rating me and from a scale from one to ten you know what that man gave me zero a zero, bro. And one day, Biggie Smalls just so happened to be doing a show out here. And E40 got the call that they have the drop on the Notorious B.I.G. We head out, get to the back. The limousine is there, but the driver's gone. All of a sudden, you start hearing the trunks of cars opening. You know, just, you just hear boom, 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 boom. Like, what the hell is that? And you just hear it. I turn around, I'm like, oh, shit. It's a gang of dudes with guns. They come up and they just very irate. That was some bullshit your man said in the newspaper. He did the article. 
about my man. We can right get him. I said, you know what? Get that man on the phone. I think that man and Big need to talk. And it was E-40's call right there. He could have said, do what you want to do to him or let him go. And they let Biggie go. So they call me and I, he put me on the phone. Say, man, you know, what's happening? You know, what was up with that, you know, situation? Man, I was, man, they got me real drunk, man. And I just got to saying anything, man. And, you know, and um, what else he said? He said, uh, man, Duke, he said, I f with Sprinkle Me, Duke. Sprinkle I, like, I rock with Sprinkle Me, Duke. You know what I mean? And I was like, well, I just, I didn't trip. I was like, man, let him, I told him, I said, put, put my folks on the phone. But that takes me to one of my favorite diss songs of all time. And it's a, it's a little known diss song, but it's so powerful. And I want you all to go stream it tonight. I want you to stream this diss song. Add it. If you got diss, look, we got what, what's some of the best diss songs out there. Um, Ice Cube, No Vaseline, easy, right? Hit them up, Tupac, boom. You know, like. These are all diss songs that everyone knows, but this diss song that E-40 made, do you believe it was on his next album? Was it on his second album? Let me go back to my notes. I think it was on his second album, which was I was ready for. Maybe his third album. I could be wrong. Whatever. Who cares? Minor details. But he came out with a song called Record Haters because people were talking trash about E-40. A lot on the East Coast. And there was a rapper who was down with Nas, down with Foxy Brown. He went by the name of AZ. Lyrical beast to this day. I've downloaded, I downloaded, I stream AZ's album all the time. His last album, especially, he just released one like two years ago. And it's, it's, it was one of the better projects that came out that year. But AZ was talking trash about E-40. Basketball players were talking trash about E-40. So E-40 did a song and he dissed basketball players. He dissed AZ. And this is one of my favorite E-40 verses. He said, uh, got another motherfucker on my shit list. I'm going to cut off his dick list. I mean my hit list. My rest and piss list. Dude that be hanging around Nas. You know gay baby. It says the negative shit about me up in a magazine called 4080 after watching New York undercover when I was taking this shit. Cool Keith was on the front cover. That's when I that's when I spotted him. That nigga AZ tried to say that I don't deserve a platinum plat. Nigga, I was selling tapes out the trunk of my car when you was running around drinking Similac. Let me take that back. That nigga AZ tried to tell me that I don't deserve a platinum plat. Nigga, I was selling tapes out the trunk of my car when you was running around drinking Similac. All up in your fake ass videos. Champagne and coffee full of skrill. Nigga, knowing damn well your punk ass ain't had no meal. He's calling out AZ, knowing your punk ass ain't had no meal. Meanwhile, E40, independent at that time, had already sold a million copies. Times 10 right out, dollar. E E40 was a self-made millionaire at this time, had more money at this time than probably 90% of rappers in the game, period, including AZ. I'll put my money on it. If I had to even put money on it, I would bet that E40 at this time had way more money than AZ. But AZ's over here talking trash. E40 ain't lit. Man, E40 came at AZ, boy. He said... I was selling tapes out of the trunk of my car when you was running around drinking Similac. All up in your fake ass videos. Champagne full of skrill. Knowing damn well your punk ass ain't had no meal. Sheesh. When I heard that, I was like, he's the goat. I was already, I was E40. I was like, dog, that's it. Does it get any better than that? But yeah, man, that was a good time, and 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 I'm glad E40 stood up for himself. I'm really glad E40 stood up for himself. But yeah, so E40 just began to run an independent label off top. Boom, releasing project after project. Be legit. D shot, Sugar T. They all released projects, and Annie was still releasing clicks. The click albums. The Click album was one of my favorite albums. That, oh man. Oh, what's that song? I remember when the world went crazy back in 1985. I remember when rock 
cane used to be a rich man kind of high till one day in my neighborhood motherfuckers are having that fatty they was hanging on the corner yelling base rocks nigga yelling two shorts blow job betty man come on dog oh e40 was just telling about it was called 1985 and that was the day his city was introduced to Brack Bro Bane. And that's what I got to do on YouTube because you say literally you be just talking in context and whatever. I'm not going to complain about YouTube right now. It's all about hip hop. It's all about E40. We're on a positive vibe tonight. We're gonna, not going to talk about censorship and all that BS that I have to go through just to freaking keep a show. You know what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a quick moment to remind you guys to hit that like button. If you have not already, just hit it right there. Boom. Yeah. Hit it with that finger. I, I won't even know you did it, but I need you to do it because it helps with the algorithm, helps build my channel. So please hit that like button. Boom. And if this is your first time joining the channel and you like what you hear, and if you like hip hop, you are in the right place. Hit that subscribe button. So let's continue with E40, the man who just kept reinventing himself, running the label, like I said, out of his. Oh, shit warehouse I mean he was doing his thing he had Office building he was doing his thing The world was watching Me and my brother Loved that Be Legit album That Be Legit album There's a specific song on there with Corrupt And uh, from a nickel and dime ass To a top 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 Big Rick up Boom Check it Check it out Check it out Check it out Check it a check it out. I mean, man, dog, that that album was sick. Definitely like the Be Legit album, and I've always liked Be Legit as a rapper. He's not going to hit you with any amazing wordplay flows and all that, but he tells a good story, and his voice is distinct. He stays on beat, and I think E Forty and Be Legit gel well together. I was never a big D Shot fan. I'll keep it real. I- I've never been a big D Shot fan. Not dissing the guy, I just never, I just never was. Never, even Sugar T. Like the only time I care for Sugar T is when she was on an E40 project. But I wasn't running out there buying any Sugar T albums, nor was I buying any D, uh, D Shot albums. I don't take anything away from them because just the whole collaboration of all of them and the fact that they all put in work and did their thing, shit, they get the utmost respect and props. From your boy Dusty Vision. Ah, what are you guys sipping on? You know, I'm sipping a little something, something. You know, um, this is the night that I do like to just enjoy, man. It's a Saturday hanging out with you all and just, you know, just talking hip hop, talking things that I love. You know, I can't play music anymore on my show from other artists because I kept getting dinged and hit and it was just like, too hard but i think i like this show better i like to just turn on the microphone press record and just talk about an artist that i like or just talk about a rapper or i mean a a project that i like or you know just ain't no notes there's nothing here it's just me you the microphone i got my my little drink my little uh my, my whiskey on the rocks you might hear the click of a lighter every once in a while because i am puffing la and this is the time that I do it. I'm, you know, I'm not a big, uh, I don't, I don't like to do it when I'm interviewing people or when, cause I always want to be on my, my best, you know, so I don't sip and do all that when I'm interviewing people. But if I'm just chilling here talking hip hop with y'all, psh, man, cause hip hop, herb and drink go together like peanut butter and jelly. But E40, man, let's keep talking E40. A lot of songs, you know, just that kept. You know, coming up, but he had this song called uh, "Some Things Will Never Change." That's just the way it is. Does it sound familiar? Yes, it does. That's because Tupac did a song similar to that, apparently right around the same time. But that's one of my favorite joints right there. And there, I mean, God, E Forty just has so many songs. I enjoyed when him and Master P used to make music together as well. That was a fun time. E Forty has always had some good collabos. I used to like when E Forty would would make music with Master P. That that was always fun. And then also, you know who I used to love together is E Forty and J O Felony. J O Felony is one of the dopest MCs ever, and just him and E Forty together back to back was always 
a, for a good song. Like you're gonna get, and they, it seemed like they always worked together. E40 was always on JL's project. JL was always on E40's project for a time, time being there, and it was just, it was just great. I used to love hearing them together. But man, E40 would go on to just continue to reinvent himself. Sorry, I got a text that I had to reply to real quick, but you know. You're thinking, all right, he's he's because he, he was already kind of older, you know what I'm saying? In in the nineties. He wasn't this this spring chicken. I don't know how old he is. Let's see. Um he always, yeah, it's it's it, uh, it's funny because they keep he some rappers keep so he's born in sixty seven, so he's eleven years older than me. So he's fifty seven, fifty yeah, fifty seven years old. Does that sound about right? Fifty seven, something like that? Fifty seven, fifty six, fifty seven. And he's still reinventing himself. So let's rewind 20, 30 years ago. He was still, I mean, that's kind of old to get in the game. 26, 27, 30 even, you know? So, um, but how does he keep doing it? How did he keep doing it? I have no idea, but he would continue. He ended up doing a lot of music, going back to some collabs I really loved. He ended up doing a lot of music with Lil Jon. And I think Lil Jon produced like one of his whole albums or something like that. They were doing a lot of music back then remember that snap your fingers uh, do you stare you could do it all by yourself let me see you do it hey sing it let me see you do it hey snap your fingers uh, do you stare uh, you could do it all by yourself let me see you do it hey uh, let me see you do it hey i mean come on dog then he would make music with keek the sneak which is another dope mc going back to three times crazy keek the sneak was a member of three times crazy three times crazy invented the sheezy for sheezy deezy maneezy but teasy jeezy yeezy keezy all that that e40 eventually entered interview uh, introduced to the world excuse me but he, he just continued to make music and like i even said earlier i don't know how he does it how he did it but Every few years, he still somehow is involved with a big hit. I mean, that Nope Yep song, that's a that's a that's an anthem. That's gonna be around for 50 years. Ever told on that? Nope. Ever pulled the trigger? Yep. I mean, I know that was in a few years technically, but come on, five was it whatever, five years, six years, whatever the case is, it's a newer song. And just the fact that a 50-year-old dude because he'd have been 50 at that time let's just give him that respectfully he'd have been 50 he's still involved with number one hits all the young kids know if they want some stank on it to put e40 on that song and it's just so dope i love love the fact that e40 is still doing his thing and not only in music ladies and gentlemen he has fat burgers I mean, he has a bunch of different shops. He has apparently he's been working on a book of slang, which I'm waiting for him to to release that. Uh, I remember him talking about that back in 98 or something like that. I was like, release that book of slang. I will buy that book of slang. But he has a very successful liquor business where he sells wine as well as beer, I do believe. And that just makes sense. 40 water, E40 do it do your damn thing you know what i mean like that's just just go with what your your name is and he, he's just leaving he's leaving a legacy for his kids man and he should be very proud of himself i'm very happy that i got a chance to experience his great music every time he releases a project i download it why do i keep saying download i'm so old i stream it i make sure i add it to my favorites and i play it i at least check it out i'm, I'm not as big of a supporter as i was 23 Five thirty years ago but i promise you this when an e40 project comes out i'm streaming it that day and i'll usually pick two or three songs out of that album that i'll add to my favorites and then it'll just become in my rotation i keep e40 songs in my rotation even the newer stuff so i please well, once you guys go out there and, and show e40 some love throw him some streams man go back and listen to that old stuff that old stuff is really really good man where the stuff just rattles your trunk and the the, the beats are you know a little like overpowers the lyrics and like the mixing is off a little bit it's that old school 90s shit that i love and the shit that made me fall in love with hip-hop man especially west coast hip-hop so shout out to e40 thank you once again for the years of enjoyment man i really appreciate it and i appreciate all of you i'm gonna ask you one more time to hit that like button please hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and please do me a favor go to dusty vision radio 
and subscribe to my second channel right here on YouTube. It's Dusty Vision Radio. Dusty Vision Radio. I may eventually start doing the Saturday shows over there at Dusty Vision Radio. So I really want you guys to transfer over there. I'm trying to give people a reason to go over there. So please, all my true supporters, all y'all, I need you to and spread the word. Dusty Vision Radio. As soon as this show's over, go over there and subscribe to Dusty Vision vision radio on youtube just put it in your search it'll pop up hit subscribe you're good to go actually i'll wait right now i'm gonna wait right now type it in your search right now go back subscribe to dusty vision radio and then come back to the show can you guys do that for me real quick all right we'll give you like 10 seconds Tis the season to be jolly. Fa la 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 la. All right. Did you go subscribe to Dusty Vision Radio on YouTube? You're back now. You good? Thank you guys so much. Seriously. And lastly, what I want you to do is please download the Rumble app on YouTube. I know there's a lot of instructions. You guys are like, God damn, dog. I came to listen to a show, not to follow some damn directions. But no, this is for my true supporters. All the fans, they've already checked out by now. But my true supporters, I need you to go over to the Rumble app. Go to your Google store. Go to your Apple store. Download Rumble. R-U-M-B-L-E. And please go over there and subscribe to Dusty Vision TV. All one word. Dusty Vision vision tv please go over there and subscribe to my channel and um, i'm really trying to build up my rumble account as well over there rumble is a more uncensored version of youtube it's what youtube used to be but then youtube got all politically correct and now they're you know we know where that eventually goes so who knows when you know youtube whatever just go over to rumble for me i post content there every single day i do appreciate you guys real talk and if you want to check out this show live every day uh, every saturday where i just discuss hip-hop i'll pick a topic i'll pick a rapper that i've grown up uh, I'll, I'll pick a story like every saturday 8 p.m pacific i do this live 8 p.m pacific standard time so please do check it out put the notification if you would like to join us live I'll talk to you all soon. You have a great rest of your morning, afternoon, or evening, depending on when you are listening to the sound of my voice. Peace.